everybody. I'm back to talk about the sixth episode of The Get Down. Now, from last episode, we know that the guys found Napoleon. And so Shaolin sits him down and he starts to question him. And Napoleon breaks down crying. He's having all these flashbacks of his brother getting killed and him watching um, another friend of his get shot in front of him. You know, Cadillac shot him. And so he's just like, I don't know, he's overwhelmed. And he said, look, I'm done with this life. I don't want to do this no more. And he just went ahead and told them that Wolf was the one who ordered the hit on Fat Annie. Now, if you're confused as to who Wolf is, Wolf is the one that I was confused about. You remember from the last video that I did, I asked the question, who is Wolf? I didn't know if he was Shaolin's father or his brother or someone related to him. I don't know. I got confused about it. But in this episode, I realized that he is not related to Shaolin in any way or form. Because as soon as Shaolin found out that it was Wolf who ordered the hit on Annie, he went and told Fat Annie what was up and she made Shaolin kill him. Now... There is a theme that was kind of going through this episode. It was about power and it was about the characters walking the line, having one foot in one thing and one foot in the other. And I'll explain more as I go through. So for Shaolin, he has one foot in the dope game and he has the other foot in his music being a DJ. So in this moment where Fat Annie tells him to kill Wolf, he has to make a choice what he's going to do. And she said that when he does this, it's going to give him so much power. And so he accepts the power and he goes ahead and he shoots Wolf. Now, once Wolf is gone, Fat Annie tells Shaolin that he's going to have to step up and take over some of the responsibilities that Wolf had. See, it's like an exchange of power, really, because... At first, he was free to go and do what he wanted to do. If he didn't want to be in the game, he didn't have to be. You know, he was in it for the money, really. But now that he's killed Wolf and he's taken over more of his responsibilities, now he's being drugged down further into this dope game. And it's just all messed up because that's really not what he wants to do. That's not where his heart is. So Annie tells Shaolin that this Saturday coming up, he's going to have to watch these boys and make sure that they push them drugs. But see, the battle is Saturday. And so he sweet talks Fat Annie and he tells her, look, I got a gig to do, but I can still push the drugs, you know, in that crowd. And I can make just as much money doing that. So she was like, well, I'm going to trust you, you know, get that money. And so that's what he decides to do. Therefore, keeping one foot in the music and one foot in the dope game. Poor Jackie is trying to shop around this record with Mylene and the girls. He goes and he talks to a woman named Leslie. And she has a lot of power in the music industry. Um, because whatever she signs off on, whatever song that she thinks is hot, all the radio stations will play it. She just has that kind of pull. But here's the thing. When he goes in to see her, he finds out very quickly that there is bad blood between them. See, she used to be Jackie's intern and she did an, um, how can I say this? This PG, um, let's just say she did a physical transaction with him. Um, and after she did that with him, he fired her, but he didn't fire her because he had an interaction with her. He fired her because she was incompetent and she stole from him and she just was not a good worker. So he had good reason to fire her, but he did cross the line when he was intimate with her. And so she says she wants a little revenge. So she tells him that she wants him to know what it feels like to be powerless. Okay, here's this power thing again. And so he has to do what she wants him to do. Follow me. It's some grown up stuff. Okay, exchange of power. Okay. And he does that for her. And even at the end of it, you know what she said? She still ain't finna recommend Mylene's record. So he did all of that for nothing. 
and she blackballed him. Every person that he called to try to get that song on the radio, they were like, no, we heard the song was trash. It's dead. Just let the song go. Let this little Mylene girl go. We're not going to play the record. No. So she blackballed him. And Jackie felt so bad about it. And he apologized to the girls. And he was like, look, you know, it's not over. I'm still going to get out here and try. And he really did try to move that record. But, you know, his past caught up with him. He had one foot in, you know, being a drug addict and a gambler in his past life. One foot was there and his other foot was in the future trying to really be a good producer and help Mylene get on. So Zeke is invited over to the mayor's house to have dinner. And the mayor's little daughter, honey, she is a troublemaker. Okay, she is one of those entitled girls who thinks everything is pretentious and she's over it. But at the same time, you can tell she enjoys having the privileges that she has, but she kind of looks down on it because I'm sure she sees a shady side of it. But anyway, so after dinner, they sit down and they have a conversation and the mayor asks him if he is willing and able to make some hard and tough decisions in order to get the things that he wants. Your moral compass has to be flexible in order to get ahead. I mean, it just has to be. This is the game that we're playing. If you want to help your community and get out of the hood, you want to do all of that stuff, sometimes you're going to have to do things that you don't necessarily agree with, but you have to do it in order to get where you need to go. And he lets the mayor know, I'll tell the people that they need to vote for Ed. But the event that he's going to have to speak at is on Saturday. Of course, when he has his battle, but he says, I, right, it's okay because I'll be able to do both. I'm good. So when it's time for the event, Zeke goes and he's there. Francisco gets up and he endorses Ed and then Ed gets up and he talks about how he's going to rid the streets of graffiti artists and how he's going to prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. And, you know, he's just talking about all the stuff that the people kind of want to hear, but you can tell that the youth in the crowd they're upset about it because they don't see graffiti as something negative. It's more of an art form. And that made Zeke feel some kind of way. And the girls were there too because they were going to sing the national anthem. And they were standing, you know, behind the curtain and they were just looking at Zeke like, really? This is not right. And so when it came time for Zeke to get up there and make his speech, he did something very clever. See, the graffiti artists, they have different names and different themes. So when he started his speech, he started weaving together the names of the different graffiti artists and their art. And then at the same time, he was able to say the PC things that he needed to say in order to keep his internship and, you know, do what he said he was going to come there and do. So one foot was in what he needed to do in order to succeed in life and get out the hood. And then his other foot was in his music. As we see a few minutes after he gives his speech, he runs off the stage and he runs to the battle. Now let's back up for a second. Now, since Jackie was not able to push this record, it was just dead in the water. But here's the thing. Dizzy and Thor, they had actually met up and Thor invited him to this party, this very exclusive party. And so when Dizzy shows up and he goes in there, he's kind of looking like what in the world is going on here? But really what it was, it was a party, like a LGBT kind of a party. You know, you had your drag queens and they were voguing. And, and we also found out that Thor is interested in men and women. And it seems, I don't know, but it seems as if so is Dizzy. So there was a DJ there, Carlos Pacusa, and it's actually someone that Mylene looked up to. But he was there DJing and Thor knew him, but I think he knows him because they used to hook up. So he goes up to him and he gives him the Mylene's record. Now, Dizzy had gave it to Thor, so he made it happen. And when they played this record in the club, everyone fell in love with it and the record spread like wildfire you know all the gay clubs were playing it you know they were loving it and so that prompted the guy from marrakesh to reach out to francisco to ask him to bring mylene in for them to meet 
And so when Jackie finds out about this, he runs so fast down there because you remember, this is the same guy who kicked Jackie out for coming to him and asking for money to fund the demo record for Mylene in the beginning. So anyway, they get to the meeting and everything goes well. And so Francisco said, well, okay, cool. I hear what you're saying. I'm going to shop around. And if I don't find anything better, we'll be back. But Mylene jumped in and she's like, no, uh, me and the girls, we want to be on this label. Please let us do it. And Francisco just gave in. Now, see, I didn't like that because first of all, girl, you don't know nothing about this music industry. You don't know that, man. Y'all need to do some more research. Talk to some artists. I mean, you need to really find out what's going on before you just say, yeah, I'm good. I mean, you just going to jump at the first offer that someone gives you. Her song is hot. So, you know, people will be bending over backwards. So I feel like she could have got a better deal maybe from someone else. I don't know. But I just feel like because she jumped in so quickly and she persuaded Francisco to just say yes, it's going to be a problem. She's going to have a problem with that label. Now, everyone was there at the battle except Zeke because he was over here trying to give a speech and it seemed as though the notorious three were going to win because they had the crowd moving they had their attention they had better equipment it was just a better setup over there but then zeke shows up they all put on their red get down brothers jackets that they had made and they killed it they utilized all of their advantages. Okay, you had Shaolin who was good on the ones and twos, okay? He was scratching his life away. <laughs> and all of them were rapping. You had Boo who was rapping and singing and dancing. They all did the dancing and stuff together. And you had Ra who was spitting fast. And the lyrics were good because Zeke wrote them. And the thing that pushed them over the edge was when Shaolin mixed in Mylene's song and the crowd went crazy and the Notorious Three, they knew it was over then. And Mylene and the girls were there to see it happen and she was like, oh, look at my man, you know. And Grandmaster was there too, so he was able to see it. Um, Shaolin did push his drugs through the crown. He did do both. So after the battle, Mylene and Zeke get together and... You know, they're just having a little conversation about the future and what they want. And Mylene talked about, you know, her music and how it was a mixture of, you know, her church background as well as her disco background. And, you know, her song just blew up. Everyone was playing it. It's playing on the radio. It looks like everything is going good. So that's where the first half of season one ended. Um, everything was tied up in a nice, neat little bow. We're just going to see what happens in the second half of the show. Now, I think that the second half is supposed to be released maybe next year. So we're going to have to wait for it. But I'm very anxious to see what happens in the second half. But until then, make sure you go check out some of the other videos that I have on my channel. I do reviews of a lot of different types of shows, so check me out if you enjoyed this one. Please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And I will see you all in the next one. Okay? All right.